Well, Claudia, I'm GDPR, privacy protection, laws, and so on. Uh, but, you know. How many data protection officers does it take to, to stop North Korean state hackers from uh, getting your data? That's an interesting question, my friend. Uh... Mark, if you have the role of a DPO, do you know where your data is in the organization? Well, most organizations don't really have a clear understanding of where their data is stored and processed. And more importantly, most organizations haven't seen any requirement to classify the data. In other words, which data is sensitive data or private data and which data is open data. So the, the problem or the challenge starts there. And of course, previous regulations have only focused on structured data. The real challenge moving forward is identifying where in documents in the file system uh, you're storing personal or sensitive information. This is called unstructured data. Uh, to answer that, I have a, uh, a story to tell you. Uh, years ago, I worked for a company where we had an initiative of knowing your client. So the bank decided that they wanted to have uh, exclusive services for uh, gold members. So they had a 24 sort of service around them, so you can order anything within the 24 hours. So what they did is that they created a database that was publicly updated all the time, containing the latest location of these very important rich people. Mm -hmm. The company outsourced that data from the UK to China, because it was more cheaper to administer the database and the surroundings for this. Now, the bank themselves sort of made the, 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 the exception around this because they thought it was speed was more important than to, they didn't understand about data protection at those times. So what happened, this is the, where the story gets interesting, is that the, the Chinese, on the other hand, decided that the database was a bit sort of uh, meticulous to keep around. So they outsourced it to an African country. A while ago in Sweden there was a scandal about health data that was mm. stored in different places. Yeah. Is this a good example of what could happen? Yes, that, that's a very good example, but it's, uh, to be fair, also um, a, a case where several parties are involved with the processing of the data. And there hasn't been a clear communication and legal agreement between the parties that are processing the data on behalf of the controller. Uh, it is a legal responsibility of the processor to follow the guidelines from the controller. But of course, if the controller is not aware that uh, they should follow certain regulations and encrypt personal data, for example, then you see these classic examples where people just put data on a file system and think that's sufficient. And they haven't even bothered to do any kind of risk assessment or any kind of information classification. They can't distinguish between normal data, which is publicly available, and personal data, which should be protected. And in this African country, they had a queue so the military took over and suddenly they got a hold of a database with the most influential people in the world and the current location. So I don't think it's a DPO question in the sense that... Well, that, that is a DPO question because that is about who is the data assistant and who is the sub-data assistant. So that one is a DPO question. Uh, from a legal point of view, you have the data processor and the data uh, protection officer. The data processor 
is the one with the legal corrections right. That's the one who can put in jail and do whatever you want with him when it comes to breaking the law. The data protection officer can never be uh, uh, accountable for their actions. That's in the role. So that's why they're called whistleblowers. We see also examples in Norway. There was a disaster in Norway where pretty much the entire population of Norway, the adult population of Norway, were exposed um, through a breach. And very sensitive medical information for some patients was exposed. And this goes back again to understanding uh, the role of the controller and the processor. The controller should very, make it very clear in their agreement with the processor what the legal obligations of the processor are and also to ensure that the processor is taking the necessary measures to protect the data according to regulation. No, 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 but the, 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 the data protection officer here could have blown the whistle on, on this. Yes, and if they've done that, then they've done their job. Yes. Then it's the data processor that needs to act upon it. And if he decides not to act on it, then the sanctions will be on him as a company and so on. Yeah, yes, but your example shows that, that there are some cases where GDPR would have helped. Oh, my, my, exactly. This was 10 years ago when GDPR wasn't even conceived. So you have to try. This is the perfect case on how uh, companies want to make uh, data processing as cheap as possible, because that's what they ultimately need. But now they have something to weigh against that. So data protection helps us not taking this wild kind of carousel sort of rise. I think that's my point I'm trying to oh, make. Okay, okay. So, so let's say you are a North Korean state hacker and, and you want to access the data. And let's say they hadn't outsourced it. Let's say it's in the bank. Okay. And, 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 and you do a, a long game um, social uh, attack. Will you uh, do business with those companies to continue to do that? I would, I would want to say no, but I do think that in, in terms of business as usual, we do have a situation where we said, do uh, companies uh, that do business to other companies said, do you have a GDPR project? Are you GDPR compliant? I do think those questions are on the table on a vastly more debated scale uh, and in-depth discussions. But I, I don't believe that that's going to be a thing of the future because it's going to be more interweaved by technology or processes or whatever. So it's going to be sort of, I do expect you to be GDPR compliant. So um, do I want to make businesses with, with, um, with, with companies that don't be GDPR compliant? I don't know because I think that that question will fall between the chairs eventually. So sooner or later, I, I, I'm not going to, I'm just going to expect. And that is a risk in itself. But if, you, if it would be today, no, I would not do business with a company that is not GDPR compliant and do not see to privacy or, 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 or react to GDPR now. Where you compromise some of the staff, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you set up a, a, a separate company. Maybe you say, well, you can come and work for us at Bank ABC, but you know, how big is your USD, USB drive? <laughs> so the employees copy it and they go to what they think is another uh, legitimate London bank, oh, wow. hand over the data. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, uh, honestly, I don't have any uh, good re re relation because there's uh, data security, and that's what you're talking about. And I think that's the problem, isn't it? That in the old world, where data used to be papers that you lock in, a, in, a, in an office, that's what the, the, the tape, our contracts that you had, right? Now they're digital. So I think the fluency, and I think that's what you're trying to tell me, that uh, the security around the sort of data becomes differently. It becomes a, a, a fact that because data now can be transferred so easily, then protecting it becomes more difficult than it used to be in the old days. That's come to uh, those lost bitcoins when pe mm. people have died mm -hmm. and uh, their credential has vanished. Yeah, so, so that's, a, that's a really tragic incident. A lot of people lost a lot of money. And 
the challenge here is that we didn't think of avail uh, availability. And also back when I do user training, one of the last slides I talk about is actually your will. Do you include your online persona, your online identity, and the password for those things? Could be as easy as the computer you use at home for managing your family's economy and getting access to uh, your bank. Can your spouse actually do that in case you're not available anymore? It's an example of where you don't do privacy by design? It's uh, partly privacy by design, but it's mostly uh, understanding the legal obligations uh, of each of the parties. Um, of course, you have, according to the GDPR regulation, two parties. You've got the controller who define uh, the purpose of processing and what should be processed. And then you have the processor who actually performs the, the processing of the data, the collection and the storage and the processing of the data, according to the instructions of the controller. So uh, do you see that privacy is something that companies could use as come to us because we take this seriously? Absolutely. We have, we have branding on eco-food, we have branding on, on uh, hyperallergy, you know, detergents and everything that says that this is eco-environment and friendly. Or I believe that there will be a brand that says we are GDPR compliant. And, and they're going to boast about it. And if they don't boast about it, then they are making a, 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 a advertising or, or a communication error. Because yeah. I would boast that. I would definitely boast yeah. that. Uh, and if uh, one or more of these parties does not understand their obligation and doesn't understand that they need to do a risk assessment as part of their design and also take into some of the principles of privacy by design, then you see the result of not putting in the necessary controls to control access and to protect the data. And this raises another question that I think uh, is quite interesting is that the data that Cambridge Analytica actually uh, spilled out, that was already uh, data that existed already in the American governments. Because whenever you enter an electoral place, uh, you actually tell which sort of uh, um, party you're going to vote for. So the information already existed. So Facebook never collected new data. It just recollected data that already was officially published. And here comes the big point. What Analytica did is that they made connections between those data. And this is a new thing. My apologies, I'm going to use you as an example. Let's say that this is me concerning my data, and this is you concerning your data. Now, when we look at those as individuals, we just see them that you need to protect your own sort of bubbles. If I would die in some way or another, but what would happen if you don't know that those fans exist? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, in, in my line of work, I actually get a small amount of stock uh, every year if I do good work. Happens that I get it, yeah. even if I do good work, but it happens to get it. And that account, the only way to get access to that is if they know that this account exists. Yeah. And there's no other recovery beside knowing what account name I used. So we go back to the prior times where there's a lot of hidden treasures. Mm -hmm. Sort of. And that's, what, that's actually the situation we are in now. So if you are a company and say that we take privacy seriously, that's uh, something you can have as a competitive advantage. Absolutely. And it is a contradiction of terms. Because if, if a company would come to me and say, we are GDPR compliant 100%, I would draw my ears back and I'd say, oh, really, I want to see this. Because if, then this company, if true, would have succeeded with something that no other company will ever do. Yeah. There is no silver bullets to this. GDPR is a process that we have to live for with on an everyday basis. And the, the, uh, the fundamentals uh, in this is that the generations to come deals with privacy in a different matter. So it is an ongoing process to actually, okay, we have a new employee, how does that behavior, attitude, and, and, and core values is to us? Because every individual today is a human firewall that needs to be trained, needs to be aware that in this digital ecosystem that is company X, we do business like this. That makes GDPR an ongoing process.
What I would like to see as part of privacy will actually be a secured vault where I actually could store the information. And we have this, those already available within the box. They fulfill this uh, function already, where you actually have a small vault inside the box where you could store sensitive information. Mm. Now this is normally used for protecting photos and everything, right? but not even that anymore. But I would say either digital vault or preferably physical vault where those type of accounts are stored in a secure way.